Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Chiefs. I'm Chris Clark. He is Mark Schofield. We are going to be talking today about Patrick Mahomes, what he has done this season, what he has done in the playoffs, and what he could be doing against San Francisco today on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. And welcome back to another episode. We are going to be talking to Mark Schofield today. As I said before, talk about Mahomes. What has he done? What has he done in the playoffs? And what is he possibly going to do against the San Francisco 49ers? Mark has been covering this league for a very long time, uh, especially at the QB position. But I want to say a quick shout out really quick. Our podcast today is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked in locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply i am chris clark from chief's corner we've been covering this team for eight or nine years now it's hard to believe it's been that long now i think about it uh but this is mark schofield mark tell everybody where they can find you well chris it is great to be back with you you can find me um at Mark Schofield on X, uh, at Mark Schofield 3916 on threads, and most of all, uh, SB Nation. I've been at SB Nation now. This is my second full NFL season at SB Nation, but you and I go way back. We, you know, I was over at Locked On Patriots for a while, so we had some some fantastic podcasts back in the day when it was Brady versus Mahomes. And I'm sure that the Tom Brady name has been discussed in, in recent days. I've seen a lot of chatter about you know, what Mahomes has done in recent weeks and where that puts him on the pantheon of all-time quarterbacks. I, I'm sure I know where most of, not all of the listeners stand on that conversation already. And there's a lot of evidence to support where they stand on that position already. But excited to be here, excited to talk Mahomes. Any Anytime I get a chance to spend some extra time watching Mahomes, it's always a good day for me. So as soon as you reached out, I was like, sweet. I get to watch some more Patrick Mahomes again and study him a little bit. So so it was fun to do the prep for this show, and I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so you get an excuse to go watch a couple more games of Patrick Mahomes. Uh, it's got to be – It's, it's never a bad day when you get to wake up and turn on the film and it's Mahomes and nothing but Mahomes. Yep, there you go. You know, it's crazy. You talk about our conversations with Lockdown Patriots in the past, and it's funny you bring up the Tom Brady scenario. We actually talked about that on yesterday's show about how he is – on pace to possibly beat Tom Brady in the future. Uh, go check that out on yesterday's episode, talking about Mahomes and his chase for greatness and being the greatest of all time. But let's focus on what he has been doing this season because you look at this season, and it's a down year for him. He's not up for MVP. He's not up for Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, the Chiefs are pretty much being shut out of all those types of big awards. Yeah, they have people in the Pro Bowl that were supposed to go to the Pro Bowl. Obviously, they won't now. But they're in a situation where this is a down year for Mahomes in this team, uh, but they're still in the Super Bowl. So how do you how do you you know deal with that? How do you think about that? Yeah, and I think it's sort of testament to the evolution of this team overall. I mean, I remember in a lot of our discussions in the past, they focused on, you know, sometimes I would come on and there would be questions about what's wrong with the offense. There were turnovers a couple of years ago. I remember that was a huge discussion. Can they figure out cover two, cover four, middle field open? I remember those discussions. And there was always that undercurrent of he feels like he has to do it all. He feels like, and we were talking about this a minute ago, he feels like every drive has to end in six. He feels that if they come off the field and they've punted as the offense or they've turned it over or – you know, they settled for a field goal. It was going to put them in a bad position because of what was happening on the other side of the ball. That's been sort of removed from the equation this year. This is a very good defense that has done some incredible things here in the postseason as well. What they did against Tua in the wild card game, what they did against Baltimore, holding that team to 10 points, holding the player that we expect will win MVP in Lamar Jackson to just one touchdown throw was a very impressive effort. And this has been a very good defense this year. And so it's enabled this offense to go through a little bit of an evolution. And yes, the production, the numbers, they're not video game numbers that we're used to seeing from Patrick Mahomes. But down the stretch and through these past through three playoff games, he's been incredible. He's been, as we talked about earlier a few minutes ago, sort of almost near, you could say perfect or near perfect. Yep. And so I think it's part of just the evolution of this team, this organization, that now he's in a position where, okay, I, I, I can throw it away. 
you know, and he's certainly done more of that down the stretch. There were some times this year where maybe he was still trying to force things, but he's learned in these past couple of months, I think, these past couple of weeks, that a throwaway is okay, that a field yeah. goal is okay. Because you're not going to be – like in years past, say the other team gets the ball, they go right down the field and scoring at 7 nothing. If he, he would feel that, look, if we go 3-0, and out, it's going to be 14 nothing before I see the field again. And so we can't do that. Now he's not – he's not facing that and it's made him it's made this offense evolve in a new direction well and we'll talk about the playoff games here in just a moment when we get back from our break here in a couple of minutes but i do want to focus on just this regular season i mean you you saw him deal with drops you saw him deal with turnovers you saw the team deal with negative plays that's really what held this team back the entire season and but you also saw him making choices that he hasn't done over the past three weeks in, in the playoffs uh, you know, when I say 23, I am talking about the regular season versus just, you know, obviously 23. Uh, but it's it's a changed Mahomes, and he learned as the season went on what he could and couldn't do. And I think that's really what, what everything went uh, for this playoff run. Yeah, and it's interesting, Chris, because, you know, not to bring up Brady again, but in recent days I, I've talked with a lot of different people about how there's a parallel between what Mahomes and this offense has gone through and the sort of the evolution that they've gone through the course of this year and maybe even dating back to last year and sort of say Brady's last run in New England that the year that they, beat, that they beat the Rams because, you know, that wasn't an explosive passing game for the most part. It was more of a they became a, a power run team, a lot of runs out of the eye, a lot of James Devlin at fullback. There's a brilliance in a team sort of taking on a new identity. The good teams are able to figure out what they do well, where they can win, how they can win, how they can win games, and then really hone in on that down the stretch and into the playoffs. And I think that's to the credit of Andy Reid and Mahomes and Matt Nagy and you know this entire coaching staff down through the players that they were able to figure out, okay, these are the things that we can do well. These are the things that work for us. These are the personnel packages that work for us. You know, out down the stretch, you see the 13 personnel and you know, a lot of yeah. that in the first two playoff games, a little bit less against Baltimore is more, I think it's 57%, 11 personnel. But the ability to adapt from a week-to-week, month-to-month, sometimes a drive-to-drive basis to win football games, and that's been very impressive to see. And again, as a as a Patriots fan, you see the Patriots stuff over my shoulder. It does remind me of some of the good New England teams, that ability to evolve, that ability to adapt, that ability to figure out what you do well and really hammer that home down the stretch. Well, and the crazy thing to me is you look at what we used to talk about. So, you know, if we were having this conversation two or three years ago, it was, you know, his mechanics are, are still failing him at times. His, you know, his decision making is, is a little off. That's not what you see from him at this point. His mechanics still aren't great. Uh, let's be fair. I mean, they yeah. never are going to be perfect. That's not what he is. But you also don't want to take that away from him because that's part of his game. So, uh, but it's just such a different conversation now than it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, he's he's never going to be teaching tape. He's never somebody that I'm going to put in front of, you know, the middle school quarterbacks that I get to work with and say, look, this is mechanically how you want to throw the football. But there are aspects to his game that you do want to see younger quarterbacks take on the ability to solve problems, which I know we're going to talk about even more in the next segment, that ability to sort of figure things out you know, and get your offense into a position to be successful if the defense has done three different things to make this play doomed from the start. And so there is a lot of what he does that is very impressive. And, yeah, you know, sometimes decision-making, you want to see it a little bit differently. The mechanics are never going to be perfect. But in the end, look at the track record. Look at what he's done. Look at the fact that this team is back. When I'll say it, kids, okay, I picked Buffalo, okay? I picked Baltimore. Now, maybe it's a jinx. Maybe you don't want to hear it, but I'm not picking against him again. Like, what <laughs> he's done, what they've done down the stretch. A lot of people thought, you know, maybe they'll get by Miami, but they're not going right. to make a deep run. Here we are. Yet again, Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, Kansas City back in the Super Bowl. It's it, Is it perhaps, I was asked this on a radio show earlier this week, if he ends up winning. And even if he doesn't, has this been his best effort yet? given what he had to do to get here, I think you can make the case that it is. He's a unicorn. Uh, that's yeah, the reality. He's one of one. He's, I mean, absolutely. Right. Yeah, his his skill set, his ability to do things, his ability to throw off platform, 
everything that he does so well, he is a unicorn. He's not going to be the guy that is going to be, you know, as you said, the teaching tape, uh, but he doesn't have to be because he's able to do things in a different way. And that's what makes him a special player. When we get back, we're going to talk about what we've seen in playoffs so far and how he has changed his game this playoff season. And I want to tell you about our friends over at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that take that likes to push things a little further? If you've ever wondered what adventure could be around the next corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is the perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class Executive Google built-in is your up is always updating assistant to call on almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD screen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-sized crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Armada will ch change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to eight in first-class luxury style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, buddy. Let's get into talking about this playoff run because it has been special. You look at the Miami Dolphins game. Obviously, weather plays a huge part. Uh, it's a huge issue going into that game. The the cold temperatures didn't seem to phase him too much. And then you get Buffalo, then you get Baltimore. Yeah, it's been a stunning run. I mean, I, I will say as somebody, you know, watching that game against Miami from the comfort of my couch and under a blanket, <laughs> like it looked like Miami didn't want to be there from their, their first offensive right? play. It was a run to the left that I just felt like man, they do not want to be there. But it didn't look like impacted Mahomes. Didn't look like it impacted the Chiefs at all. You know, Miami had the one underthrown ball to Tyreek Hill that ended up in a touchdown. But other than that, it was really all Kansas City that day. And, you know, then you look at that game against Buffalo. You look at the game against Baltimore. It really what stood out to me as I was like revisiting those games earlier today was just the ability to solve problems, the ability to sort of if you take away options one, two, three, four, he's going to get to option five and he's going to make you pay. I mean, the first fourth down conversion against Baltimore, sprint right option, you've got <laughs> one, two, three. You know, Kelsey on the backside slant is like the third or fourth read on that play. Right. And he gets to it when you've taken away the first three. You look at that third and five, that ridiculous fadeaway throw that Kelsey ended up diving for. He wants to hit MVS on an out and up to the right. Then he comes to the crosser. Those are taken away. He starts scrambling around in the pocket. When you have to cover nine seconds, ten oh, seconds into the play, I I looked at the timestamps exactly on the video say. clip. Like, yeah. you can't. You cannot as an NFL defense. Like, the way – the touchdown to Kelsey. You've got Kyle Hamilton in man coverage. And, look, Blanking there's an him. argument to be made that Hamilton was one of the best players on the field in that game. Solves the problem of placement. Yeah, you're going to cover him. You're going to be all over him. Doesn't matter. I'll put this throw. Do you remember the the full house backfield play against Buffalo where they lined up? He's in the pistol and you got a guy behind him and Kelsey's to yep. his right. So the full house, Kelsey runs the corner route. They're in cover two, man. You've got curve flat defender, linebacker, safety coming down, sideline. You've got basically four points of pressure on your receiver and he puts it in the perfect spot. Like, he has found ways to solve problems with his mind, with his athleticism, with his ability to throw off platform, with his accuracy, with his trajectory, like you name it. Like every single thing you want to see a quarterback do, like if just in a pro day, he's doing in the AFC championship game on the road. He's doing in Buffalo on the well, road. Like unbelievable. And he's doing it against the best defense in football. And yeah. I, don't get me wrong, the Chiefs defense was fantastic, but Baltimore's was better this year. That's just – if you look at scoring, you look at yardage, that type of thing, they were better this year. Yeah. Now, regardless of, of how you feel about the Chiefs defense, Baltimore's defense was fantastic. And you look at that specific play, that 10-second play you were talking about, I have to smile because you sit there and you think, okay, they went into this game and their best offensive lineman the entire season was out. Yeah. And like, it didn't It didn't matter. It they still gave Mahomes 10 seconds. And Matt Abike is uh, up against the guy that is being – replaced by or is replacing Joe Tooney 
in Nick Allegretti, and it didn't matter. I know we're talking about Mahomes, but to watch that offensive line do what they were able to do against the Ravens in that scenario, so it is a whole team effort, and I get all that. But the thing that really stands out to me, and I and don't get me wrong, PFF has its issues, but I saw a stat that's just crazy. He hasn't had a single, not one single throw in the playoffs that has been turnover worthy. Yeah. Not one. Yeah. And, and when you contrast that with some of the other quarterbacks that – you know, he's played against this season that he's played against in these playoffs. Some of the, the quarterback he's going to play again in the Super Bowl, like there have been turnover worthy throws and he hasn't done that. And when you combine that with this chief's defense, it makes it very tough to beat them. Like, you know, against Mahomes, generally, you want to sort of steal an extra possession because you know, you got to score and keep up with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at, look at how the season began with Dan Campbell. I mean, right. fake punt in his own territory because he knows, look, you get to steal an extra possession or two against Mahomes. You yep. might, might not get that with the way he's playing right now. And so that makes this team so much dangerous. And your point, Chris, about the offensive line, it's a very good one because this is a Baltimore Ravens team that had 60 sacks in the regular season. And part of the Best reason the a lot NFL. of people, myself included, thought, look, this could be a problem is the way they were able to get pressure while blitzing just 21% of the time, which is like a – eighth lowest in the NFL. Like they were able to get pressure, get 60 sacks while not blitzing a ton. That's usually the recipe to beat a team like Mahomes in Kansas city. It didn't work because they kept them clean. They figured out the sim pressure stuff and Mahomes is Mahomes. And the crazy thing about it is everybody, at least the people that are doubting Kansas city right now are talking about how they don't know that if Kansas city can handle the 49ers defensive line, I'm sitting there going, they just went up against the best defensive line in football. Yeah. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong, the 49ers are good, but they're not the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens were better this year, and they were able to handle it. And, yeah, Mahomes got hit, and Mahomes uh, took a, a couple of sacks. I mean, that uh, going up against the Baltimore Ravens, two sacks, I think I'll take that just about every single day. So uh, really hard to argue, really hard to feel bad about that. But then you look at the other things that he's done. It's, it's moving players with his eyes that he continues to do at such a great – uh, at a great clip, it's calling plays and maybe changing plays when he sees something that is, you know, that the defense isn't necessarily wanting to show, but he's changing the play into something that he knows he can beat them with. Or one of the best things he's done all season, and this is going to sound crazy, or one of the best things he's been doing in the playoffs is throwing the ball away when he just can't do something. Yeah. When he sees that pressure is getting to him, he does this. And this is something you mentioned before we started recording. He is to the point where he understands he doesn't have to make everything, every play. He is trusting his defense. He is trusting the rest of his team to pick up where he, they are as long as he doesn't make a boneheaded play. And he hasn't done that all playoff season. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, sometimes the best decision a quarterback can make is, and this is something that, you know, Mahomes has learned through the course of these playoffs is to throw it away. Like you said, like, I'm not going to be in a situation where we'll be down 14 nothing if I don't score here. And I think, and I know we're going to talk about the Super Bowl in a second here, but one of the things to keep in mind is Mahomes' ability to diagnose, to process information, to adjust on the fly. It's not Jared Goff's. Like Jared Goff got into trouble against San Francisco when you think about that second, fourth down. You know, they showed him all these man coverage indicators. So he checked into mesh, and Greg Olson did a tremendous job covering this in the moment. He checks into mesh and man beater, but then they drop into zone and Goff hesitates. It's been a yep. staple of Goff's career. If you get a scenario like that, say Mahomes sees a man coverage look from San Francisco, he checks into a man coverage play, but they drop in the zone. It's not going to have the same impact on Patrick Mahomes. He's like, okay, right. well, you're in zone. I'll figure it out. Or he'll have the athleticism, the willingness to extend it nine, ten seconds into a play to figure it out. Right. Like, you're not going to have that sort of short-circuit kind of moment for Mahomes against this Niners defense. The Niners defense has Nick Bosa who can win one-on-ones, but it's a different kind of pressure. It's not schemed. It's not sim pressures. It's just guys winning one-on-ones. Mahomes is athletic enough where, okay, if Bosa comes around the edge, I can step up. I can click and climb. I can move around. Like, so, you know, the 49ers defense is good, yes. Baltimore's, as you said, more sacks in the regular season – they pose a lot of problems. The Chiefs solve those. I think they get a really good shot at solving the ones that the 49ers will put in front of them. Well, and the, the 49ers defensive line is fantastic, but their back end isn't great. 
And I think that's, that's where this, thing. yeah, I think that that's where this is really going to get in to being an interesting matchup when you start talking about the back end of this, that San Francisco defense. Uh, don't get me wrong, they have some good players, but the scheme isn't the same. The, 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 ability to uh, execute that scheme is not the same as it is against the Baltimore Ravens. So I do think that that's going to benefit Kansas City and Mahomes. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute when we get back from this. And I want to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on your team that you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you hosting the big game party at your house? Go to DoorDash right now and go throw in all the items that you're going to need for that game, whether it's, you know, wings, whether it's pizza. You can order things and get it delivered to your house the day before or the day of for the big game. This Chiefs team is going to be taking on San Francisco 49ers. It's going to be a huge game. You want everything ready for the party, and DoorDash can be your help to get that. Whether it's chips, dips, nachos, or everything you need to make your own nachos on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing the game at all. Get prepared before game day, stock up on your favorite appetizers, and order all your tailgate gear on DoorDash. Then get ready to watch your team win. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23, subject to change, terms do apply. And I think one of the things that everybody needs to make sure you go do is go check out NFL Today. Uh, the We have a YouTube page that plays every single, every single episode of Locked On. Uh, you can get multiple different things 24 hours a day. It is out there on YouTube. They have different shows going all the time. You need to go check out Locked On Today. All right, Mark. This Super Bowl is going to be a lot of fun. It is a rematch from a couple of years ago. Obviously a different team on both sides for the Chiefs and the 49ers. But there's going to be a lot of things that I think Mahomes is going to be able to dial in on against this 49ers defense. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think there's a couple of things that offensively the Chiefs can dial in on. And one of the more interesting aspects to the AFC Championship game to me was the fact that Baltimore didn't run the ball as much as we thought. Like we thought that there was going to be a lot of run game from Baltimore. You almost wonder if they were sort of going to, you know, if they were going to, sort of second guessing themselves and so you know i was surprised to see that but from there's a parallel there because you look at this niners defense you could run on them and and so i think there's a lesson to be learned you know for Nagy, for reed going into this game like let's there's an opportunity to run the football here let's look at what detroit was doing early you know run the ball a little bit I i think that's an opportunity here i also think that there's an opportunity for plays down the field you know the strengths of this niners defense are kind of front six. You know, Greenlaw and Warner are very good linebackers, perhaps right. the best off-ball tandem of linebackers in the NFL. There's obviously a good defensive line, as we just talked about. But then you get to the outside, you get deep down the field, there are opportunities for plays. And so you pair those, you can see some opportunities for some play-action shot plays down the field. And then there's the fact that, look, you know, Mahomes and what he's done these past three playoff games, it makes it so hard to defend because even if the Niners have some things dialed up, even if they have what they think are some potential answers for Mahomes, he's got a way to get to plan C, a way to get to plan D that he's shown throughout these playoffs, really throughout his career for the most part. It's just been a different way this year. And so I think there's opportunities for a place in the run game. 
I think there's opportunities for shot plays downfield. I am very curious if we see a lot of Kelsey and you know Fred Warner. That would be sort of a fascinating matchup to think about. But I think there are some things that really Kansas City can do in this game that should work for them. Yeah, they may put Fred Warner on him, but I don't think that's going to go well for him. Kelsey was on a whole nother level going to get up against Baltimore, and Kyle Hamilton was probably one of the best defenders in the NFL, like you said earlier. Yeah, uh, and he wasn't able to shut him down. Kelsey, 11 11 for 116 and a touchdown. And uh, you know, you put Warner on Kelsey, I, I don't think that's going to end well for the 49ers. I'm sure they're going to focus on trying to tr- stop him, but Kansas City has developed a guy in Rasheed Rice who, yeah, has stepped in and, and done amazing things. I think he had. I think I talked about this after the the game against Baltimore. He he only had I think he had eight catches for forty six yards, which doesn't sound great. But then you look at it a little deeper, and his yak is forty two. So he caught the ball and still got forty two yards of yak on forty six yards receiving. Yeah. Uh, obviously, his a dot and you know the average depth of the target is is pretty small, but his ability to get downfield and that doesn't even count the touchdown that was taken off the board that shouldn't have been. Right. And, you know, another, I, I think Rice's sort of development has been huge for this offense, you know, over a Monday football, Monday at SB Nation, we kept all season long and said, look, they got to get him involved more. My buddy JP Acosta is saying they got to get him involved more. And you're seeing that. And especially if you think about some of those quicker throws, those shorter throws as a way to neutralize that pass rush, to neutralize Nick Bosa, get him and Chase Young moving laterally rather than up, you know, upfield. That will yeah. be huge. And I think the MVS catch at the end of the game against Baltimore, <laughs> I, I think that little bit of redemption could be huge going forward because if we get a big MVS shot play or two, that will also be huge for this offense and start to open up a lot of what they might want to do, work it underneath eventually. And so you get Rice coming on, you get that you know the little bit of redemption for MVS, also two critical things that could play out in a huge way in the Super Bowl. Well, and the MBS play, I mean, it's it's playoff playoff MBS. It's just a different guy right. in the playoffs than he has been all season long. Uh, and you love to see it to an extent. It's extremely frustrating if you've been watching the Chiefs all year long yeah, right. uh, to see, okay, why didn't you do that during the regular season? Uh, but the bigger thing, and I think this is you know kind of what you were alluding to, the bigger thing for me is with what he's done in the playoffs, you have to defend this team differently knowing that he's been doing that in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, and, and you can't you can't sit on it and, and think, okay, well, they're not really <laughs> going to throw it to him, or if they do, he's not going to catch it. You have to actually prepare like he is going to make the play because that's what he's been doing. And, and I think that's also a big part of what we saw from Kelsey against Baltimore is that, you know, in the regular season, we felt like, you know, watching this Chiefs team, you bracket, you double, you do whatever you want to do to take away 87, and they don't have an answer outside of that. And, right. and you're going to slow this offense down. Now with Rice fully emerging as a weapon, with what we saw from MBS, now like you said, Chris, you have to account for him. You can't just say, look, we'll, we'll put CB3 on him because it's not going to be a factor. We'll focus on 87. We'll focus on Rice. Now you're in that bind where, given what we've seen, given what we saw at the end of that game, they can make you pay with MBS yeah. and it just makes it so much harder. And then you start thinking, okay, well, we have to play more too high. Okay. Well, that's going to open up opportunities for Kelsey underneath. I mean, you saw that in that game against Buffalo, they would try to go too high to take away rice downfield, take away MBS downfield, take away Watson downfield. And it freed up space for Travis Kelsey. And, and, and so well, now you've got more problems that you have to solve. If you're Steve Wilkes going into this game, let's say Antonio Pearson company in that game on Christmas day, where it's like, we'll take away 87. We don't have to worry about anything else. It's a different chiefs team now. It is. And it goes even further than just MBS and Watson and Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. I mean, you start playing too high and the chiefs go to the three tight end set. No, great can beat you. No yeah. great can make you hurt. It doesn't have to be where he gets 100 yards. It just has to be one or two plays where he gets 10 or 15 yards of play, and it makes a big difference because it's going to make you change how you play your defense, and it's going to make you draw coverage differently than if he wasn't making plays. He's had several games this year where he's had big catches, uh, and it's just timely catches. That's the big thing with him. So I do think that that's a big issue. And, and you talk about Watson. Watson's another guy. Mahomes trusts. Yep. He will throw it to him even if he's covered. Uh, Watson is still dealing with drops. We got to hope that they get that figured out. But, uh, you know, this is a game, and, and we haven't even talked about a guy who could play. Don't know. Kadarius Tony is a difference yep. maker, a wide receiver, can be 
that's a whole nother ball game and a whole nother conversation. But that is a different chess piece that if you are able to put them out there, it changes what the defense has to do. Yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of options now outside of Travis Kelsey, and that is massive for this team. And yeah, I mean, the 13 personnel stuff, you know, you put them in a bind because if you see 13 personnel, and it's it's why it's been so effective for the Chiefs to begin with, you want to think run, but you don't want to load up in base because it's Patrick Mahomes on the other side of the field. And right. it just puts you in such a bind as a defensive coordinator. So, you know, there's, there's a ton of interest in X's and O's scheme stuff to think about going into this game. But trying to defend this at the moment version of the Kansas City Chiefs, it's a puzzle. I'm glad I don't have to solve. <laughs> well, the other fun part about going to 13 personnel is if you're running Pacheco out of the backfield in 13, he's shown that he can catch the ball. Yeah. He's also shown he can pass block. So yeah. you're in a situation where it may look like you're running the ball, but maybe it's a pass. Maybe you have all three of your tight ends go out. Maybe your wide receiver goes out for a pass. Pacheco's picking somebody up on a blitz. Uh, or maybe he's one going out in a pass route. I mean, that's there's so many different things that they do, and Andy Reid absolutely loves using two and tight, two and three tight end sets, so that could play a huge factor in the Super Bowl. Mark, thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on. Really enjoyed having you. Uh, again, tell everybody where they can find you over at SB Nation. Well, SBNation.com, uh, that's the easiest. You Then you go, you know, at Mark Schofield on X, Mark Schofield 3916 on threads, but the easiest place is just SBNation.com. Mark, appreciate it again. Thank you so much. Be sure to go check out the Locked On Sports Today YouTube channel. Like I said, 24 hours of Locked On Sports, uh, all the different podcasts that the network has out there. Go check that out. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be back next week getting you ready for the Super Bowl. Ryan and I will be doing a deep dive all week getting you ready for this 49ers team and the Kansas City Chiefs being in their fourth Super Bowl in five years. Thanks a lot for listening today, and we will talk to you next week.